So what is the most meta chord progression in music? And what do we mean by the word meta? Well, our usage of the word has a more metaphysical uh, designation to it, or a divine usage of the chord progression. In other words, how it's been used historically throughout history, and how that history has informed the usage of the chord in even today's pop music. Let me show you some examples. She is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. strange when you're a stranger faces look ugly when you're alone women seem wicked when you're unwanted so what all these songs do a great job of illustrating is the use of a playful cadence what that means is well in these contexts four to one so if i'm in the key of c my four chord is f my one chord is c like you hear at the end of let it be There's your plagal cadence. We'll define it later as any movement from the subdominant region of our map to the tonic region. For right now though, we can just think of it as four to one. What's interesting about this chord progression, it makes it different from our last chord progression, the most important chord progression in music, the five seven to one. If you haven't seen that video yet, definitely check it out, is that in, uh, in a vacuum, it doesn't really tell you anything. You need more context to understand that a plagal cadence is happening. If you're new to MDEX Music, we create music books and apps, piano arrangements, and we discuss improvisation, songwriting, and sometimes we take music theory to strange and uncharted places. So subscribe and hit the bell, and join us for exclusive access to our ever-expanding library of music resources. Let me show you what I mean. Let me show you how F to C has two completely different meanings based on context. So first I'll establish the context. So I'm just establishing the ear to understand that we're in the key of F. So now when you hear F to C, there's tension in that C chord that wants to go back to F. However, if I play the same chord progression in the context of Let It Be, F to C now has a tension release quality to it, right? So, in one context is four to one, tension release, our play cadence. In the other, it's the exact opposite, it's creating tension when you're in the key of F. So this is why establishing the key as it relates to the playable cadence is really important. Once you have established the key, you can kind of zoom back in and take a closer look at some of the notes in these two chords. Let's stay in the key of C, so we'll see the F as our four, and our C as the one, our kind of tension, definitely release effect is, is, is at play here. When you zoom into the F chord, what you'll see, or what you can do once you have established the, the key, is assign a, a sort of weight or value to the notes in the C scale as it relates to tension or release. Once you do that, you see certain notes have a lot of tension weighted to them, like the leading tone, and that B. Other notes that have some tension assigned to them are the four the fa, in this case, F, and also the la, the six. So when you see it from the context of we're in the key of C, and then you look at that F chord, you see fa and la, F and A are in both. So there is some, once you've established the key, there is some tension to this F chord. Once there's context, you can see and or hear rather, that these two notes want to go there. And this is, that's exactly what you hear when you go from this F chord to this C chord. That's exactly what you get in your plagal cadence. So let me circle back to the introduction of the video and the title and our use of the word meta, right? What does that mean? What we're basically talking about are the metaphysical or divine implications of this plagal 
cadence and how it's been used historically, especially in church hymns. You always hear that at the end of church hymns, right? Amen. And how this religious or divine use of this chord progression evolved over time and how it became, I guess, secularized by blues, uh, gospel, and even modern rock music, as in the case of Let It Be. A really cool quality of the plagal cadence is that it allows us to break one of our previously stated rules of always move clockwise around the map, like always go four, five, one. It's the best way to journey around the map. But what this plagal cadence allows us to do, or opens the door for, is counterclockwise movement around the map, or contrary movement, like you see in blues and gospel all the time. Our Dusty Springfield example is a perfect representation of this, especially when you listen to the chorus. Only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. The only boy who could ever teach me was the son of a preacher man. Yes, he was. He was five. Ooh, yes, he was four. One. And you hear this sort of movement all the time in blues and gospel music. Not only that, you can listen for these qualities in minor pieces as well. Everything we're talking about today, all of these, all of these traits or qualities that subdominant to tonic has is applicable to songs in minor keys also, like in People Are Strange by The Doors. So they're in the key of E minor, and you just hear them bouncing back and forth in the verses from the one chord to the four chord. That plagal sound yet again with minor chords in a minor key. E minor, A minor. A little dominance, perfect authentic cadence at the end, but a majority of that verse is predicated on that plagal sound. So now after today, we have a much more comprehensive view of our map. We've got three very distinct, clear regions with all of their little qualities to them, right? Like the, the dominant region. All of the chords in the dominant region contain the T, or the leading tone, the seventh of the key. The subdominant region, notes or chords in this region, I should say, contain either the Fa or the La, the subdominant or the submedium. And we've got chords in our home region, the tonic region, uh, highlighting usage of the tonic and the mediant, the one and the three. So with an understanding of these three regions, what makes them different and their defining characteristics, we're gonna be able to move forward and explore all sorts of musical concepts as it relates to tonal harmony. Thanks again for joining us. All of our members will receive free supplemental content as it relates to today's lesson. If you're not a member yet, click on the join button or join us by clicking on the link down below. We have all sorts of awesome stuff on our website, mdex.com, books, apps, whatever, you name it, that you can buy to help broaden musical horizons. So check us out there. If we're not on sale, don't buy anything just yet. Rather, uh, subscribe to our mailing list because that's the best way to find out about our sales. We're going on sale all the time. So if you get there and we're not on sale, don't buy anything just yet. Shoot us your email, subscribe to the mailing list, and we'll let you know. Thanks for watching.